Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on how to install the Android development tools that we will be using in my upcoming Android development tutorial. I'm going to show you how to install the Android development tools, not only on a PC, but also on a Mac, all in one tutorial. So we have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, probably most of the reasons why you might be having trouble installing the Android SDK is because you're trying to use this right here. For some reason, it is quite buggy. So instead, what we're going to do is install the Android Developer Tools plugin for Eclipse, which is, in essence, exactly the same thing. Now, to do this, you're going to need Eclipse Indigo, not Juno. So just go into Google, type in Eclipse Indigo, and go get it. And here it is, and this is the specific version you're going to want, Eclipse IDE for Java Developers. And I provide a link in the upper right-hand corner on how to install Eclipse if you don't already have Eclipse installed. Now on to how to install the plugin. So I'm going to bounce over into Windows right now, and briefly I want to show you one thing that can cause havoc for you. If you go into your computer, you want to make sure that you have Eclipse installed, and I'm just bouncing through here real quick. In a directory, here is Eclipse right here. You want to make sure that Eclipse is installed, and let's go down to Properties in a directory that does not have any spaces inside of it. And as you can see, Users Derek Documents. I have it stored in my Documents folder. If in this path you have spaces anywhere, that is going to cause havoc. So make sure you install it in a directory that doesn't have spaces. And if you follow the tutorial I previously mentioned, you will not have that problem. So now into Eclipse, and remember we want to use Indigo, and we're going to go into Help, and we're going to do exactly the same thing on a PC as well as a Mac. The only reason why I'm focusing on a PC right now is there are a couple more issues in installing with Windows than there is with Macs. So you want to click on Help and then go Install New Software. Then you're going to see available software pop up, and right here you're going to see work with, and here you're going to click on add. Then you're going to type in something that makes sense for this, like Android Developer Tools. And then inside of here, let's zoom in, you're going to put an S after that. Then you're going to type in DL, and I have a link underneath the video that has all this typed out for you so you don't have to worry about messing it up. And we're going to go google.com, so it's dlssl.google.com forward slash android forward slash eclipse. And after you do that, hit OK. Then underneath here, you're going to see developer tools and NDK plugins. Let's just select both of those bounce down here and hit next. Then this guy's going to pop up on your screen and again just hit next. Then you're going to have to come down here and accept the terms of the license agreements. Again, this is exactly the same on Macs and PCs and it's going to install your software. If you get any type of warning or whatever, just hit OK. And then it's going to say you need to restart Eclipse. So just click restart now. Again, same thing on PCs and Macs. And as you can see, I'm using Eclipse Indigo here. It's very important. Juno is still very buggy for some unknown reason. And then you're going to have to have a workspace set up and hit OK. And then everything opens up, and here's a welcome screen. Let's just get rid of that. And now you know you have the Android Development Kit set up because you have these little Android icons up here. So everything's all set up. And people ask me all the time, how do you get Package Explorer to open up? You're just going to go into Window, Show View, Package Explorer. Click on that. That's how you open up Package Explorer. Then if we want to come in here and create a new project, we're just going to go up to File, couple different ways of doing this. Let's go new, come over here. You may have to scroll way down here to click on other and then this little wizard pops up here on your screen and then we'll click on Android and Android application project and double click on that. After you use this a couple times you won't have to type that in every single time or go through the other part. Then we're going to give the application a name. So I'm going to keep this very simple. I'm just going to call it hello world. And then down here under package name, you should probably put in a web address that you own. So I'm going to type in new think tank. There we go. And then here what we're doing is defining the versions of the Android SDK that we plan on developing with. And whether they are very restrictive or not, that will just limit the number of different devices that this will work on. Then after we have that set up, we just click on Next, and then you're pretty much going to click on Next for everything else here. Later on, we'll get into more complicated applications, so just keep on clicking on Next. We're going to leave this set up as Blank Activity. Click on Next. This is going to be Main Activity, which you're going to see here in a second, and click Finish. 
Again, exactly the same thing done whether you're on a Mac or a PC. I'm going to get to the part here in a second that is different with a Mac and a PC. Okay, so we have Hello World opened up here on our left side of our screen. And Activity Main, that was the guy that I said you're going to see here in a second. Now this is one of the bugs that occurs all the time for people. We're going to go in and we're going to select Activity Main and I'm just going to put my cursor inside of here. This happens all the time. Very common error. Now what I'm going to do is set up an Android Virtual Device, and to do that, I'm just going to click on Android Virtual Device Manager, this little guy up here, and you can see that it opens up, and I actually have a device inside of there for some odd reason. Then what we're going to need to do is, let's just imagine this isn't even here, actually let's make it go away, so let's just click on Delete. Okay, so there's nothing set up. Well, you can click over in Device Definitions, and you're going to see a whole bunch of different Android devices listed. Some of them are very specific, and other ones are quite generic. So if we want to start working with one of these guys, we can either select that or we can just go into Android Virtual Devices like we have right here. Click on New and you're going to see one of the errors that occurs with PCs but does not occur with Macs. So I'm going to type in My Nexus 7 and I'm going to click on this and just select Nexus 7 and Target API. And sometimes what you're going to see here under CPU is that this does not have an option which is not going to allow you to set up your device. We're going to hit OK and everything worked but let's act like it didn't. How we're going to fix that, and remember I've set this up on numerous different OS's, this is how to fix that if you get an error there. We're going to click on Window, and we're going to come down into Android SDK Manager. Now, if you click on this inside of a Windows version of Eclipse, you're going to see a completely different version. Here is the Android SDK Manager. As you can see here, there's a ton of different things inside of it. And if you get that error that I previously talked about, the reason why is MIPS system image is not installed. So we would just want to select that and then here it's going to say delete because it's installed, but we're going to select it and hit install packages. And that is going to get rid of a system image error. And if you get any other types of system image errors, remember on the previous screen when we were trying to set up our virtual emulated device, just select all these different system images and that error will go away. But we don't have that problem. So let's look at what that looks like over on a Mac, just to show you. So we'll go into Window again, Android SDK Manager, and you're going to see that it looks completely different. I have no idea why. There you go, you can see that there's a lot less different packages there and I have all of them installed in this situation. So that's the difference between Macs and PCs. Well now we're back into the PC world. So we're going to come back up here, Android Virtual Device, again same thing, Mac PC. I'm going to see if I can cause an error. I'm going to hit start and I'm going to click on launch. Now this thing is slow as death. It's unbelievable how slow this is. And of course later on we're going to get into how to actually run these applications on our own devices. And you're going to see it brings up a Nexus 7 tablet emulator, and you're going to see how slow it is. It doesn't look like I caused the error that I was trying to force myself to cause. The error that occurs sometimes is under Layout, right here where we have Activity Main. If the error occurs, you're also going to see in the Layout folder another file, and it's going to be called Activity Main .out.xml. If you see that, then what you're going to need to do and let's just wait for the emulator to continue executing here for a second and I'm gonna get into that. As you can see it's terribly slow. And a lot of times people get frustrated and just give up. Another fun thing that happens is sometimes whenever you run the emulator for the first and even the second time it crashes both times. But I have never seen it crash a third time. So unless it crashes a third time don't worry about it. Everything's still working the way it should. And after you run it two or three times, it works without crashing thereafter. So that's good. And yes, it does crash on both a Mac and a PC. That's not something that's different. And there you can see the emulator's finally starting to work. Terribly slow. Literally the first time you execute it, it takes minutes. And then it's going to bring up this, which means that it's more than likely going to crash. Just understand that after it crashes the first time, sometimes the second time, it does work. So just hang in there for a second. And it looked like it crashed the very first time. So I'm just going to select it again and I'm going to hit start again and launch. And there it goes, a little bit snappier this time. And there we go. This time it looks like it's going to work. So we're just going to open up this guy. And finally, after executing that three times, you're going to see Hello World printed out on your screen. If you really are serious about doing Android development, you're going to want to get yourself some sort of Android device. But yes, indeed, it does work. 
because the emulators are so slow. Now actually I'm going to jump over in the Mac, again same as a PC, and get into what I said before. If you do get a weird error and nothing executes, chances are what it is, like I said before, is you're going to have inside of layout, which is inside of the res folder, or the resources folder, a file called activity underscore main dot out dot xml. If that happens, just select the dot out dot xml file and delete it. And then what you're going to want to do is go under project up here and click on clean. After you do that, then you want to re-execute it by going up here either and clicking on this little guy to open up the different list of emulators or you want to come over to hello world or whatever the name of your thing is. Come down here and then go run as Android application. Now as per what all of these different files do, I'll get into later on in the tutorial, but activity main that you have right here, just to give you a brief overview. What it's going to do is define the UI layout in XML, and the reason why it's gonna do this is it's gonna separate the application part of your application from the user interface. And we're gonna to wanna to do this because, of course, Android runs on 50 million different devices, and by defining our layout inside of XML, this is just gonna make it very easy for us to include many different layouts that are optimized for all those different devices. So that's what Activity Main is. And the other guy you're gonna see all the time here is under Source, click on that, and then click on whatever your name of this guy is, and MainActivity.java. And what MainActivity.java does for you is basically just override the onCreate method, which you can see right here. And it's going to call set content a view, which is gonna lay out your UI. And in general, all of the different resources for all of your application is going to be found in the res folder right here. And that is basically how to set up Android on a Mac and a PC. Please leave any questions or comments below and I'll provide a link to the Android development tutorial as soon as it is done. Till next time.